Well, in that case, um, I'll just introduce us to this Ortho GPT reading group. Um, I'm going to be hosting it from now on as uh, Sam has had to step down. So big thanks to Sam for getting the group started. Um, we're going to try and focus the reading group now on efforts that are going to help us make better agents. So that's research that we feel is going to be applicable to agent development. Um, and to that end, we're inviting the authors of their papers to discuss their papers with us. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions, reach out to me, please. So to that end, our first paper that we're going to have presented to us is LLL Vendor by Dong Fu Jiang, uh, who authored the paper itself. Um, I'm going to stop presenting now and let him share his screen so he can start presenting his paper. Yes, thank you, Scripty. Uh, I will share my screen now. So, can we guys see the PowerPoints? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, okay, I think it's not uh, enlarged. Uh, let's, let me there again. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, so, firstly, um, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Dongfu Jiang, uh, and uh, I'm an incoming computer science SPhD at University of Waterloo, and also the first author of Arm Blender Work. And I'm very happy to be invited here to present our Blender Work to Auto GPT uh, Reading Group, and it's really great honor. And hope my hope you guys can find my contents. Uh, useful and so uh, let's go into start my presentation. Uh, before diving into the Arnold Bender work, so let's first uh, reca recap of our motivation first. Uh, so from last year we can we have seen from last year we have uh, seen lots of large language models emerging. Firstly, ChatGPT, then Cloud, then GPT-4, and also the open source large language model. And firstly, Alpaca, uh, then Vicuna, and CBORM, etc. cetera, blah, blah, blah. And while we are impressed by these, uh, the capabilities of these large language models, uh, I think an immediate thought uh, of ours is that uh, how good exactly of these large language models and which one should I use for my task uh, and which language models should I choose. Uh, uh, thanks to the efforts of Chatboard Arona and uh, Alpha Evo Leadboard, and our LM community has finally developed a reasonable, a reasonable and uh, widely accepted mindset uh, to average the overall performance of different large language models. Uh, for example, Alpaca Evo uh, reports the uh, average overall performance of different large language models uh, by, comparison, by comparing the uh, responses from these large language models with the text deficit 003's uh, responses, which is GPT-3's uh, responses. And they report their winning rate as the overall performances. Uh, we also conduct our own analysis. Uh, so how do we do that? We firstly choose a set of instructions, then we select a, a few, I mean, exactly 11 popular large language models, and then we generate responses of these uh, large language models on, the, on this set of instructions. And then we count the percent of examples where each model ranks first. Uh, as, you can see, as you can see in the figure, and so actually, uh, different models, uh, the optimal large language models for different examples can significantly vary. Uh, there is no a single 
uh, large number of nodes that can dominate on these instructions. So when, when we ask which large number of nodes should I use for my input, uh, our answer is to, uh, we don't want to choose anyway. We want to ensemble, the, ensemble these uh, large number of nodes and finally utilize their strengths uh, to finish uh, a task jointly. So first, uh, then I will provide a summary of large uh, language of our RM Blender work. Uh, RM Blender, we introduced the RM Blender is an is an uh, ensemble learning framework for large language models by uh, for 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 ranking and fusing articles from multiple large language models. Uh, for the instruction folding in data sets. Uh, our own blender is consist, consists of two modules. Uh, the first model is pair ranker, and it's used for ranking. Uh, the pair ranker ranks the responses through pairwise comparisons, and the, it will select the best, uh, the top uh, candidates from different large language models, and we think they are high quality. Uh, then the gen fuser, the gem user is used to fuse the top ranked responses uh, identified by the pair ranker by regenerating. Uh, this, uh, we think the gem user can generate a brand new uh, output with higher quality. And we also propose to mix instruct a new benchmark. Uh, it's an instruction data set with 11 large number models uh, responses. And we use this data set to emulate our. Uh, RM Blenders, which is an uh, uh, ensemble learning framework for large language models, uh, its abilities uh, on ensemble learning. Uh, so let's first give an overall explanation of large language of our RM Blender, uh, how it work and how this pipeline go, uh, goes through. Uh, so firstly, we got N large language models. So we denote it at RM1, RM2, and RMN. Uh, for a single input X, uh, we can get the responses from the large one models, and we denote these candidates as Y1, Y2, and Yn. And after that, uh, we will try to feed these candidates into the pair ranker to let the pair ranker select the best one. How do we do that? Uh, so, firstly, we uh, concatenate uh, each pair of these candidates uh, with the input X. For example, we concatenate uh, uh, the source input X with Y1 and Y2 is a is a is a random uh, pair from these uh, N candidates, and then we feed this concatenation X plus Y1 plus Y2 uh, to the pair ranker, and the pair ranker will tell us uh, whether Y1 is better than Y2 or Y2 is better than Y1, and we receive these results in a matrix. We call that comparison results. And after that, we count the, uh, basically, we, you can think that we count the winning times of these uh, different pairs, and we reduce these winning times uh, to a, a sim single rank of these candidates. And then we, after that, the pair ranker's job has finished. Uh, then we select the top ranked candidates, for example, the uh, firstly, uh, the Y first, Y second, and Y third, which is ranked by the top three by pair ranker, we uh, we can candidate these candidates with source input X, uh, forming the uh, X plus Y first, Y second, and plus Y uh, third, and we feed these concatenations into the gen filter and gen filter uh, to let it uh, output fields and generate a brand new output. Of Y of higher quality. So this is actually how our blender work and our idea goes through. Uh, after the, uh, in the following part, I will go through some details of these uh, pair ranker and gen filters. So firstly, the details about the pair ranker. Uh, there are actually some previous methods of uh, ranking the candidates and sacrifice one of them, trying to enhance the capability of large language model. Uh, not not the language models actually. Uh, so firstly, the uh, uh, MRMS scoring. MRMS scoring trying to assess the quality of uh, taxes through uh, computing the cellular cellular uh, uh, 
tokens uh, through masking each token one by one and computer scores. As you can see in the figure, uh, the Amron score we only focus on the candidate itself, and it never cares for the source uh, tax X. Uh, and similar, SIMCLS is another framework for ranking candidates. Uh, it encodes the source input X and uh, the candidate YI using a single encoder and finally resulting in an cosine similarity score of uh, the source input X and uh, each candidate YI. And finally, it, forming the, it forms the uh, uh, scores of these candidates S1, SI, and SM. Uh, as similar as is training using Martin ranking laws, it's actually a ranking uh, ranking task. Uh, what's the, uh, some ranker in the right uh, actually uh, is different from similar as in their encodings. Some some ranker encodes the source text and the candidate YI through a single cross encoder. As you can see, there is a tension mechanism uh, working between the source input and the candidate YI, and finally. Uh, they are, it also computes the score as S1, SI, and SM, and this, uh, this sum ranker is trained uh, using uh, binary cross entry loss, uh, which is used to find the best uh, candidates through all these candidates. Anyway, these are all individual scoring methods, as I can say, uh, which means that they never care about difference from, uh, between different uh, candidates. So. So next, uh, we'll talk about why we do pairwise comparisons. So firstly, judging from the matrix scores, we can always see uh, subtle differences among high-quality candidates, uh, which means that high-quality candidates are usually uh, very resemble, uh, similar to each other. And there are, we, our assumption is that uh, individual scoring, such as um, MRM scoring, similar as in some ranker, uh, they are hard to, it's hard to capture this difference through individual scoring because it never cares for the difference between the candidates. And we view this as limit, the limitation of the previous methods. And why pairwise 2? Uh, the pairwise 2 comes uh, comes from, the, uh, this idea comes from human intuition. Uh, people always do better when they can directly compare two candidates. Uh, as you can see, you can, uh, you, because you can compare the candidates uh, token by token, text by text, and that is very similar to the bidirectional retention mechanism uh, from birth family models. Uh, it uses, uh, it makes the model could learn the subtle differences between two candidates. So our assumption here is also the bidirectional retention resembles the human direct comparison. Uh, then let's talk about some details about GenFuser. Uh, GenFuser is actually a quite simple architecture. Uh, GenFuser we uh, sim uh, simply use its front teeth of as a uh, backbone models, and we fill things through the input concatenation, and we didn't do any architecture design. Uh, we simply just uh, concatenate these, uh, uh, these source input X and uh, for example, the top three candidates, Y first, Y second, and Y third. I can kind of these things, and we fit it into a language model and then regenerate for us. Uh, during the training, we do some, we also have some trick, have some tricks for the computer design. Uh, however, they are all in the encoding level. Uh, firstly, it facilitates the sum summary ability. Uh, as we know, Flunty Fab is uh, has been fine tuned on some some resolution data sets, so we think we can aid an uh, instruction as the end of the concatenation. For example, uh, summary the uh, candidates for this input for us, and we hope that this uh, can uh, this uh, post phase can help uh, uh, help Fontify to utilize the capability of some duration to help it learn how to uh, regenerate a better output. And we also uh, add some special separators uh, such as uh, extra IDI uh, between each input type. For example, X between Y first, we add extra ID one, and uh, Y first between Y second, we add extra ID two, uh, et cetera. Uh, some details about the mixing instruction. First, let's look at the mixing instruction. Uh, it's an instruction, uh, let's look, look at the statistics. 
uh, it's an instruction to the site, and we have collected 11 popular large language model responses, and we will see these large language, model, uh, large language models in following uh, slides. Uh, the instruction and responses tokens are all constrained to a maximum of uh, 128 because uh, due to the experiments, uh, uh, in, due, to, due to the experiment considering, uh, because we don't have uh, uh, any longer resources to compute, to compute any longer uh, uh, lenses. Uh, so uh, and the figure below is the statistics of the mixing instruction. As you can see, we have uh, 100 k, uh, k and 5 k, and 5 k is re respectively for the train development and uh, the test uh, sizes. Uh, we also report the large animals uh, performance on the test side of these uh, generations, and we will, uh, for example. Uh, the very first uh, conclusion is that open assistant of Vicona performs best. And large language models, also the large language capabilities can significantly vary too. Uh, as you can see in the automatrix bird score, bar score, and blurt, uh, Vicona and open assistant can achieve uh, always the best. Uh, also, we uh, propose uh, to evaluate from ChatGPT and we propose GPT ranked and uh, Bigger uh, beat uh, Vicuna and beat uh, Open System. We will introduce these examples later. Uh, firstly, the, uh, then we introduce the set, uh, experiment part. The setup we use Automatrix bar score, blur bar score, and we also use the chat bit pairwise evaluation. And we do, do the same thing as pair ranker to reduce that to uh, GPT rank metric. We also report the number of persons that these. Language, language models, uh, how many person have each uh, beat the open assistant and how many person of these responses beat the Vicuna. We uh, respect, respected it by OA and VSC. Uh, the pure run curve by point is DBART and Jeff user is from T5. So these are rankers results. As you can see in the picture, uh, I think the most important metric is GPT rank, and we can simply look at that. Uh, the rankers, uh, the rankers can significantly uh, increase the ranks of these language models. Uh, for example, uh, for of these responses. Uh, for example, the best uh, single language model is open system and it achieves uh, 3.9 in GPT rank, and pair ranker uh, enhances this GPT rank to 3.2. I think there are significant significant improvement. Uh, there are also significant improvement in other metrics too, uh, and let's give that. The future results is also better. The future, uh, when we select the top K uh, candidates and identified by pair ranker and fit that to Jan Fuller, and uh, the uh, automatrix of bar score, bar score, blur to significantly improve proofs, and then GPT rank also improves, and on vendor can achieve great, very good. Results. Uh, we also analyze the correlation to the correlation analysis of pair ranker uh, with other rankers and automatrix. Uh, it also achieved the best. So let, let me talk about some limitations. So, uh, firstly, the efficiency. Uh, for the pair ranker, since it's pairwise comparison, it needs uh, um, uh, half of the n times n minus one times inference in the number of large language models. So, for example, if you, if you have five large language models, you need to perform 10 times of inference to uh, get the full matrix comparison, uh, comparison result. And we also did not do uh, human evaluations, uh, comprehensive human evaluations. Uh, we only use uh, automatrix and CDVT were used for Apple. Uh, transferability is also not evaluated, and we think we can further uh, apply our own blender to non tax modalities. Uh, some thinking about sampling. So, firstly, uh, I think we need to dive into deeper sample. Arm blender is a pure text level sampling. Uh, however, mix of experts is another level of sampling, model or logic level of sampling. Sample work is from MOE. Uh, from MOE, yes. Uh, 
Also, the cost of the assembly. Rancor is very light. Uh, fuser is quite heavy. Also, uh, but actually, the base language models cost the most because every time you need you perform assembly, you need to compute the base language models out of both uh, once every time. Uh, non tax are. Uh, also, we want to pursue the non-tax modalities uh, in the future. Uh, instead of tax only, could we do the model model assembly in the future? And uh, is there any framework and methods can be explored? Uh, we don't know and we want to search in the future. Oh, yes. Pause. Uh, so what are we currently working on? So we're working on the RM Blender V2. Uh, we are need to increase the number of large language, model, language models for assembly, exempt from the carbon 11 large language models. And we want to uh, increase the uh, context length instead of uh, simply 128. I uh, want to pursue high quality data. Uh, open is, uh, we utilize, utilize, utilize the uh, open instruct from Caterpillar of Una. We also aim to run Evo on the above Evo benchmark. Our preliminary results show that Ranker gives results better than any single model and fuser encounters, but fuser encounters performance in generations. And we will, I think you can see the results in the future. Okay, I think my presentation is uh, over. And finally, after that is the Q&A part. Hey, well, thank you so much for that. Was, uh, very interesting. Thank you. Um, uh, I personally have have one question which isn't really that clear for me, and that is with the gen fuser. You say the output is equal to x plus y one, y two, and y three, so the top three ranked um, outputs. But does that literally mean taking the embeddings? And for each element of the embedding, you are adding them together. Adding together, you mean by adding together, you mean what? How do I? You mean the uh, adding the tokens embedding together? Um, could you just explain how it works? I don't quite understand how. Oh, you oh yeah. It. yeah, yeah, yeah. So simply. Uh, let me let me return to the Jenfuser part. Uh, maybe I didn't spend a while before. Uh, also, further you can see that we simply can calculate uh, this plus didn't represent the uh, embedding plus. It rep this plus represents the function of concatenation. You simply uh, concatenate the hand on or tail of these source inputs and. Uh, uh, models. For example, uh, this is just uh, in, uh, yeah, it's quite simple. It's just uh, for example, you finish the uh, just write the y first uh, after source input and write the uh, y second after the y first, uh, etc. You can say that we are doing the proper engineering here. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of like a proper engineering here. We just uh, model, we just uh, change the change the uh, top three candidates and source input. Yes. So does that mean that when the output of LLM Blender is a message that has X first, then Y one, then Y two, then Y three, and uh, no, no, uh, oh. the output is the brand new output. Uh, is a brand new. Uh, candidate for this instruction source put on source input X only. Uh, yes, you can you can you can view this uh, Genfuser as a summary. Uh, it tell we tells the Genfuser uh, we give them uh, a source instruction and three candidates, and we ask the Genfuser to summary these three candidates and give a better. Uh, can, uh, brand new candidates let it regenerate, and this is the white hat. Uh, yes. so thank you very much. Um, if anyone else would like to ask a question, please, you know, jump in now. He's got maybe one minute left before he needs to leave because it's it's half midnight there. Um, if you do want to ask more questions, send them to me, and I will forward them on to Dong Fu, if that's okay. 
Um, yeah, I, I have a really quick question. Um, it, it seems like the, the strategy here is um, fairly generic. Do you think that something like this is going to be able to get a, uh, applied once you have, um, you know, really a bunch of really competitive models with GPT-4 and so on and so forth, where you can potentially have uh, use this as an ensembling method with closed source models so on and so forth? So, uh, sorry if that's a naive question. I, I missed a decent chunk here. Uh, yes, the, the strategy here is quite simple, actually, yeah. Uh, however, I think uh, the potential of the ranker, uh, uh, the potential of the application of other, of, of, of other uh, uh, benchmark and platform, I think, is what we are covering, that, is what we are currently doing. And our preliminary result is that a ranker can perform quite good and the can encounter performance generation because the, the filter can uh, go through the regeneration and we think this, this is a bottleneck. And uh, uh, whether it can perform better than GPT-4 over cloud, I think um, maybe maybe no, because we are simply using a, a three, uh, a two very small models. For example, peer ranker is only uh, 440 million parameters and uh, the fuser from T5X draw is only 1.3 billion parameters compared to the Avoca is 7 billion parameters, which and GPT-4, uh, let alone GPT-4. Uh, so I think, yeah, we can get the uh, performance enhancement, but I think we might still work harder if you want to uh, get better performance than GPT-4, yeah. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Okay. Well, I'll let you go now, Don, for uh, the promise to keep this to half an hour for you. But thank you so much for coming and presenting. Uh, any other questions people have, I will send on to you if that's okay. And maybe you can answer them by text. Thank you. Thank you. So I will leave now. Uh, thank okay. you for very much. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Okay, well, I hope everyone might got to see that and enjoyed that and thought that was uh, useful and interesting hearing directly from the author. Um, I'm going to invite some more authors uh, from papers that Douglas has identified for next week. And we're going to try and do, I think, maybe a slightly more of a panel layout to have a few um, authors on to discuss a topic. And we'll try it on uh, Twitter spaces and see if that works. Um, what group? Everyone think about that. Sounds that sounds lovely. Um, yeah, I mean, hopefully, if uh, if we need graphics, then people can throw things into like the Twitter Spaces thread or something like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. What do you mean by that? Like, just just tweet pictures, or because you can't yeah. actually see anything in Twitter Spaces. Well, yeah. So on on Twitter Spaces, um, when I was using it the other day, there was. Uh, like there's a specific thread that's associated with it, and so people that want to ask questions or interact with the thread, they would they would tweet those questions to the thread basically, and then people would interact and talk with that. And some of the speakers would push their stuff to that thread, and then the um, host could then highlight specific tweets. Oh, that's cool. So if we go and get the presentation and make each slide a picture, I could tweet the pictures and highlight that tweet as the presenter's talking. Yeah, exactly. And then, then the presenter just has to say, okay, there's there's 15 pictures in this tweet. I'm on picture whatever or something. And I, something like that should work. Might might require a little bit of playing with it to get it figured out, but something like that should work. Yeah, if I limit the number of uh, pictures each presenter could have to just a couple or three, um, that might work better. For sure. Cool. Okay, well, thank you, everybody. Yeah, thanks for putting this together. Hey, see you all.